Hi guys, welcome back aboard good old Athena. This week we're here in Schrevinge in the Netherlands. We'll be here until Friday and I figured that was a good opportunity to get back to doing a little bit of DIY. This week that means installing this sound system. That includes this WB670 hideaway unit that will be the brains of the system, an FS402 speaker that we'll use here in the saloon, a pair of F65CB speakers that we'll use in the forward cabin, and a pair of these super awesome Awesome little wireless remotes. A little bit later this week we'll go on an adventure and see if we can find a Mac Mini for editing video here at the nav station which also means mounting a 27 inch computer monitor right here. Here. If you're new to our channel, my name is Mess and this is my fiance Ava. I've spent the last five years doing a somewhat extensive refit on my 1987 Warrior 38 named Athena. That involved all kinds of fun stuff like building a new rudder using vacuum infusion, gutting most of the interior to make structural repairs and then subsequently rebuilding most of the interior. I also rebuilt the entire deck and painted the top sides. All of that fun is documented in hundreds of videos here on YouTube. Currently Ava and I are on our way to the UK where we're going to spend the winter and then next year we're going to cross the Atlantic, head to the Caribbean and then to the US. My original goal for this week was to install a telescoping table pedestal here near the settee so we could finally have a table but we're only going to be here in Schrevingen for about four days or something like that and it's not enough time to get our hands on such a doohickey so hence the audio system. Fortunately I've got our aft cabin here jammed full of exciting doohickeys. This is for instance the monitor we're going to install later for that Mac Mini and this is also where we're keeping the sound system. With all of those exciting gadgets and doohickeys waiting in the aft cabin there is no excuse to be bored even on a rainy day like today when it's much nicer to be here inside of the boat rather than out and about. So let's get started. Like I mentioned this hideaway unit is going to be the brains of the system. This is where all the inputs are going to be connected to and also where the speakers are going to be connected to. As I suspect would be the case for most people we don't have a single music CD here aboard the boat but we do have music on both of our phones and we also have a single USB drive with all of our music downloaded onto that and that USB drive is going to plug directly into this guy so we can listen to the music directly from that or we can stream the music from our phones. So there's going to be absolutely no need for digging around for CDs. The hideaway box has some pretty cool features. For instance, it's going to be connected up to Anime 2000 so we can control the music or the audiobooks or whatever we're listening to from the chat plotters, but I can also control it from my Garmin smartwatch. So yeah, plenty of cool features. This is everything that was in the box. There are a couple of cable harnesses and Anime 2000 cable obligatory manuals and paperwork and of course the box itself. As you can see there are plenty of connections on the bottom of this. There is an optical in that I think we'll use for our TV. There's an RJ45 which I think we need to use to connect this to our Wi-Fi router because I don't believe the Apple Play is going to work without this being connected to a Wi-Fi router but uh, we'll find out later. And of course there is the USB connection. All of the cables on the wiring harnesses here are very thoroughly labeled so that is certainly going to make life a lot easier. The speaker we're going to be installing here in the saloon is this guy, the FS402. And this guy is actually IP65 rated. That is overkill for here inside of the boat. He's designed to be installed outdoors. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and crack open the box. There's a bit of speaker cable included, some mounting hardware, a decorative front, the speaker itself, and something I absolutely love to see, a cutout template. We won't actually need that cutout template because I'm going to be using this optional extra, this frame that allows us to mount the speaker without cutting any holes. Often when installing speakers on a boat it can be hard to find somewhere to place them because well there's going to be a speaker poking out the back of that hole and that might be difficult to hide and something like this can be a big help. Of course that means that there is going to be something protruding out into the saloon which doesn't look as nice as if the speaker was flush mounted on the bulkhead but yeah this is the only way I could install the speaker here aboard Athena. The frame is in place but of course the speaker is not really going to work before we have some cables running to it so how do we get cables up here without them being visible. The speaker is on the other side of this mirror in the head and I do have a little channel for the cables for the TV running behind here so if we can just get from the speaker to that we should be all set. Thank you. 
After a little bit of fiddling about, I've got the hideaway unit connected to power and to the speaker, just using some Waco nuts because this little arrangement here is temporary. All of this stuff, including our upcoming NAS box, is gonna go inside of this little area. For us to be able to connect the speakers in the forward cabin to the green and purple wires here, we need a little bit of speaker cable. That is a great excuse to head to The Hague to see if we can find some speaker cable, an HDMI cable, and maybe that Mac Mini. We walked to the bus stop next to the marina and took bus number 28 to the train station. And what a beautiful train station it was. Around the corner, there was a really nice electronic store where we found almost everything we needed. While we were in The Hague, we also strolled around and checked out a few of the sites in the pouring rain. We found almost everything we needed yesterday, but we did not find speaker cable. Fortunately, some should be delivered by Amazon to the local grocery store in a few hours, and then we can move on with the speaker installation. So far, nothing critical has broken while we've been underway, and uh, I think it's safe to say we've had a pretty successful sea trial so far. But last week, we did come kind of close, because one morning, Ava noticed kind of a not-so-great smell from the head. Inside of the shower, behind that wall back there, is the poop tank, or the holding tank. Now, we were in a marina, so it closed the seacock, so that meant the holding tank was filling up. So far, we don't have a tank sender on that tank because I figured we'd just keep an eye on it and be careful, but apparently it fills a lot quicker than you would suspect. So uh, yeah, it was starting to overflow. We caught it early, so it wasn't a big deal. Just a little bit of scrubbing and there's absolutely no smell or anything now. But the stupid thing is that this thing could have totally prevented that. And the only reason I didn't install this guy is because I couldn't find him when we were starting to get the boat ready to go. This is a little sensor that adheres to the side of the holding tank and connects to the controller for the head. If this sensor sees liquid inside of the holding tank, it will prevent the toilet from flushing, meaning once this is installed, we shouldn't be able to overflow the holding tank. This has no moving parts and it's not in contact with the yucky stuff inside of the tank, so I thought this was a really cool idea. But pro tip, it doesn't work if it's just sitting in its box and it's not installed. So let's go ahead and correct that. Uh, this is a great example of a boat project. There are only two wires that needs to be connected. I've connected them as per the instructions and the thing doesn't work. It's never just simple. I've reread the instructions a bunch of times, but seeing as it is only two wires, I don't really see how I could have messed this up. I don't know if this sensor might not be compatible with my controller, but I've emailed the manufacturer and uh, hopefully they get back to us soon. Mads is working on the boat today, so I am going on a solo excursion. I'm so excited. I've been dying to go to this place since we got to Schrevenen. 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 <laughs> But it's only, it's a 30 minute bus ride, but it's only a 45 minute walk. So I thought it would be a nice walk and see the sights. Here is the marina and Athena is way down there. Hey, we're getting close. I can see the signs. It's Maduro Dam. For those of you who don't know what Maduro Dam is, it is an entire park full of miniature replicas of famous places and cities in the Netherlands. It was built in 1952 and I'm so excited excited because I love miniature little tiny things and on top of it all the proceeds are go 100% to charities in the Netherlands so I'm so excited I can't wait to see the tiny things oh my god <gasps> my wildest dreams are coming true Maduro Dam is a living monument to the World War II hero George Maduro he famously led an attack and recaptured an enemy occupied villa in Reisvik Shortly after the war, a member of the board of the Dutch Student Sanatorium, Miss Boone van der Strap, was looking for a way to raise funds for students who were recovering from tuberculosis. That's when she came up with the idea for a miniature city. At the same time, George Maduro's parents were looking for a way to honor George's memory that captured his curiosity and spirit for life that individuals and families can enjoy and share together. Thus, the collaboration of Maduradam was born. As it says on their website, since its opening in 1952, Maduradam has donated over 34 million euros to charities that help children develop self-esteem, empathy, 
and a little bit of hero courage. Many statues, many windows, many light posts, your people. Those are some big fish. This is the Schipfart Museum in Amsterdam. It's a museum all about shipping in the Netherlands, but what's cool is this glass dome is inspired by the lines of a compass on old sea charts. Big little sailboats. Oh, is that Athena back there? Nope, but it's miniature and cool. Wow, wow, this is the St. John's Basilic. Look at all of the details. For being a park of miniatures, it is actually pretty big. Ness and I drove past this the other day on the bus. It's the Peace Palace and it holds the judicial body of the UN. Have your clogs made here. Hmm, is that a mini thing? Tiny clogs. Found the marina. Oof, the sailboat looks like it could use a little DIY. Oh man, I'm really a sucker for these. Oh! Tulip pin. They want to make this into the happiest war memorial and I think they did just that. I mean, I may be biased. If you want to make anything the happiest place, just make it into a miniature replica. But the detail and the time they put into each structure is incredible. Plus, it was a beautiful day. It was the perfect day to come. But now, it's time to go back to Athena and show Mess my little clogs. I know he's going to be as excited as I am. Speaking of boat projects that turn out to take longer or be more complicated than you first thought, I spent about four hours yesterday running this speaker cable and it's only about eight meters into the forward cabin but it's just so fiddly but anywho the speaker cable is in there and that means i should finally be able to install these two speakers out in the forward cabin by no stretch of the imagination am i a speaker expert but just looking at these two units there's a pretty big difference i went with the bigger one here in the saloon because i figured it might be nice to have a more bassy sound when we're watching movies or tv shows for music, we're only ever going to use these for a bit of mood music, so we don't need tooth rattling bass. Just as here in Saloon, in the forward cabin, we're going to use some of these frames here so we don't have to cut giant holes anywhere. And with the speakers connected, we should now have two zones. I've queued up some royalty free music, and yes, there are two zones, they're working. The sound out here in the saloon is definitely richer. I don't know how to describe it, it sounds better. But yeah, we've got two zones. We can't play different music in the two zones, but we can adjust the volume independently. So if we want to bring it up here in the saloon, we can, or in the forward cabin. So yeah, that's how that works. As you might have noticed, there were three zones available in there. So we do have one zone that we haven't utilized yet. For instance, if we want to add speakers out in the cockpit, I don't think we want to do that. But if we want to, we can use that. That does require a separate amplifier to be able to use the third zone. But yeah, it's an option. In terms of control controlling the music that's playing, we've got tons of options. I've added one of those little round remotes here to the side of the kitchen island. So from that we can play, pause, skip tracks or adjust the volume. We can also do the same from our phones. We can also do the same from both of the chart plotters, so the one here at the nav station and the one up in the cockpit. And of course, I can also control everything from my Garmin smartwatch. I really like these little round wireless remotes here. They don't take up a lot of room. They're powered by batteries, so they're super easy to install wherever you want them. And yeah, they're pretty intuitive to use. We've got an extra one of these little wireless remotes. It comes with this base here, which has some adhesive on it. This just snaps in place. And uh, as you can see, there's one of those little button cell battery doodads in here, and that should last for a pretty long time. So yeah, super convenient. Controlling the music from the watch is only a few clicks away. You go in here, you scroll down until you get to Fusion Link and that's it. You can now control the music from the watch. We haven't fully decided where to install this last remote yet, but maybe somewhere near the Viper so we can still control the music in case we've both forgotten our phones and I don't have my watch. So yeah, I think that might be a good spot for it. While I've got my tools out, there is something else I'd like to do and that's to install a Mac Mini and a giant computer monitor here at the nav station. And well, that's this stuff. Giant computer monitor might be slightly overstating it. It's a 27 inch model. That's the biggest we could fit, but at least it's the 
the 4K version. The primary purpose of this computer is going to be to render videos, and value for money, meaning bang for buck, you're not going to be able to do better than Apple's M1 chipset. So yeah, I've chosen to go with a Mac Mini so we can have an external screen instead of just a laptop, and I'm pretty excited about this. While the primary purpose of this is going to be to render videos, well, we could also play around with OpenCPN and some other software that might be fun. I don't have an NME 2000 to USB gateway that's suited for that right now, but uh, yeah, that's something we can look into over the winter. I also picked up a mount for the monitor and a mount for the Mac Mini. This is the middle of the road model. This has 512 gigabytes SSD internally and 16 gigabytes of RAM. So I've also picked up a super fast one terabyte external SSD just to make absolutely sure we don't run out of space. The mount for the monitor is a super cheap one off of Amazon. The packaging kind of gives that away, but uh, hopefully it'll be okay. So far the mount is actually a lot nicer than I was expecting. It was only a few euros, so my expectations were kind of low. The standard mount that comes with the monitor is of course completely useless on a boat. It looks like there's no easy way of removing this doohickey, which is for the included mount, but that's okay. We can drill a small hole to allow for this. And it also looks like we've got a giant hole right here where one of the screws for the mount is gonna go. Now three is gonna be plenty fine for now. And then this winter I can cut a bigger hole and recess this in a little bit so the screen is not poking out so far. I think that'll look better. But yeah, for now, this is perfectly good. I also have a lot of other finishing touches to put on the nav station this winter. For instance, this area down here, this thing, and as many of you have pointed out, this opening up here. So yeah, we're gonna have to mess around with all of this a little bit this winter, so that's fine. <laughs> Okay, yeah, see this gap? I don't love that. I want to have this closer in there, but yeah, like I said, that's something I can fix over the winter. And also, yeah, this needs to be a more rigid mount. So yeah, we'll get back to this in the winter. Fingers crossed that the mount for the Mac Mini is a lasting solution and not something I will have to redo this winter. Well, that certainly seems like a super nice snug fit. The Mac gets mounted down here underneath the chart table, nice and out of the way. Let's see if we can get these doodads fired up. Even though we're not completely ready for this installation, like I still want to modify the nav station here a little bit, there are a couple of good reasons why I picked up the Mac Mini now. For one, it's uh, a fair bit cheaper here in the Netherlands than in the UK. And I know we wanted one for rendering videos, so we might as well pick it up here. The second reason, and the reason why I'm setting all of this up now, is because here in Schrevingen, there's actually pretty decent Wi-Fi in the marina. I don't know what it's gonna be like when we get to the UK, but we've got it now, so I might as well take advantage. As is usually the case with a new computer, there's probably some firmware updates. We might as well go ahead and download those now that we got Wi-Fi. And also I need to download Final Cut, which is also pretty big. So yeah, I'm gonna take full advantage of the Wi-Fi. It's not super fast, but it is plentiful and free. 3.8 gigs worth of updates and 3.1 gigs worth of Final Cut Pro. As many of you know, I've got a background as a software developer and I am really excited to yet again have a fully functional nerd done here with a proper computer. That is gonna be a lot of fun and I'm really excited for this winter. As should be pretty much obvious to everybody by now, I kinda like gadgets and computers. I'm very comfortable with them and yeah, I'm well versed in that universe. Something I am not well versed in is fishing. We got these two doohickeys from a fellow Danish boat here in the marina and I am super excited to give this fishing business a try. So before we end this video, I wanna say a great big thank you to Mikkel aboard and also, happy birthday, Miggle. We'll include a link for their Instagram profile in the description down below. They are on their way to, I think it was Australia, so that might be worth following along on. So yeah, thank you, Miggle. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be pushing on to the UK, but that's for next week's video. Yep, so next week, hopefully a bunch of sailing. Maybe we even get some good wind, fingers crossed. But uh, yeah, we hope to see all you guys back here aboard Athena next week for some sailing. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like. See you.